Welcome back, eighth grade. We're still in section 4.3, and we're going to cover examples four and five in our discussion today in our video lesson. And I'm hoping that these two examples will be a little faster than the first uh, three that we covered. The first three, I just needed to lay a lot of groundwork because this could be things that you haven't seen before. And so that's why I was going very, very slow and why the videos tended to run a little bit long. Now, examples four and five, four is focusing on finding slopes that are horizontal and vertical lines. And so remember what we just learned in example three, we just learned about rise over run. And that is what we want to use here. We want to use rise over run to show a trend about horizontal lines. And then again, to show a trend about vertical lines. Now I'm going to highlight the two lines. So here's our horizontal line right here. Just wanted you to see it real good. And then here's our vertical line in letter B. Okay. Now that we see those a little bit better, just wanted to make them kind of jump off the screen at you just a little bit more. I apologize for the graininess of the picture. It is a copy from a copy basically out of our book. Okay, so let's go back to rise over run. Remember, rise is our movement up or down on the y-axis, and our run is our movement left or right on the x-axis, okay? So let's look at our horizontal line. You see two points are, are depicted here, and we see those very, very clearly. You don't have to use those two points. You could use any two points on that grid intersection that your horizontal line goes through. So you're not limited. You're never limited, okay? So let's start right here with negative 1, 2, and we want to move our way over to 3, 2 using rise over run. Now let me ask you a question. Do I need to go up or down to get to my next point? And the answer is no. I'm, the, I'm on the exact same level as 3, 2. I don't have to move at all. So what number means I don't have to rise? And if you said zero, you're exactly right. So if you don't need to rise, all you need to do is run, then let your rise be zero. Okay, we didn't have to go up or down. We were on the same level already with the point we're trying to get to. Okay, now we do need to run. And so if I'm starting at negative one, two, and I want to run two, three, two, then I've got to count it out. Okay, so let's take a look. Let me see how the increments are going. This graph is just a little confusing. So let me see if I can figure out what's going on here. So it looks like I'm running one, two, three, four. That's what it looks like as I'm counting over. It looks like I'm running four units, okay? So of course, what's zero divided by four? And if you said zero, you're exactly right. So this horizontal line has a slope of zero. And, and I'm going to go ahead and stretch you even further. All horizontal lines have a slope of zero. All horizontal lines have a slope of zero. So not just that horizontal line, any horizontal line that you're given, you, can, you don't have to calculate using rise over run. You could just memorize this. You could memorize that every horizontal line has a slope of zero. So you could memorize it, okay? So um, anyway, let's look at a vertical line. Again, let's use rise over run. I want the numbers to kind of drive this answer, okay? So um, they gave us two points. You see negative two, three, and negative two, one. So that, that's where those are. So if we start at the top point, negative two, three, and we came down, that's our rise, we came down two. Okay, so we came down two, and then our run, I'm on top of the point I wanna be at. I don't need to go left or right. So if you don't need to move left or right, place a zero there. Now, we have a very big problem here. 
can you divide by zero ever? And the answer is no. And I want you to make a note. No, you can't, cannot divide by zero ever. Okay? So the answer is that the slope is undefined. In other words, there's not a number known to man that will ever define this particular slope. It's undefined. So it doesn't have a slope at all, which is different from having a zero slope. Zero is actually a number value in, on our number line, and we can find it on a number line. Okay? Zero is different from having no slope at all. And that's what vertical lines have. They don't have a slope. So there's, their slopes are undefined. So vertical lines have no slope because their slope is undefined. You can memorize that too. Okay? So you can memorize that horizontal lines have a slope of zero and vertical lines don't have a slope. Or you can use rise over run and calculate it that way. Okay? Now, if you want to, rewind, listen to me again in case some of that didn't make any sense and in case you're a little bit lost, rewind and listen to it again. Okay? Now, I'm going to move on to our very last page of notes. And this particular one kind of ties in a concept you learned at the end of chapter three. Do you remember talking about correlations? Okay, I hope you do. You guys are actually really good with correlations. Correlations really is just, you didn't know what it, what it meant in chapter three, but correlations are slopes. You're, you're basically describing what's going on with the slope. Okay, and so do you remember what I told you? If a line is leaning to the left, like this one is, do you remember what the correlation is? And you guys told me, hey, that's negative. Well, you know what? If we knew the numbers on this line and could use rise over run to calculate the slope, we would find that this is a negative slope as well. So it's not only got a negative correlation, this type of line, lines that lean to the left like this in letter A, also have a negative slope. Okay, let's look at letter B. I highlighted your line here. Hey, wait a second. Does that look familiar from example four? What kind of line is that? If you're thinking horizontal, you're exactly right. Now, if I wanted to describe that correlation or describe that slope, what would you tell me about the slope? And if you said, hey, we just learned horizontal slopes have uh, a slope equal to zero, you would be absolutely correct. So this has zero slope. The slope equals the number zero, in other words. Okay? So letter A has the negative slope because it's leaning to the left. And letter B has a zero slope because it's horizontal line. Okay? So hopefully that makes sense to you. I'm going to wrap up uh, and just like hopefully not too much longer. And I just wanted to uh, make one more tie, one more thing in. We learned this in uh, section 4.2, I believe, about the steeper the slope, the bigger, the bigger, uh, steeper the line, the bigger the slope is. Okay? And that's what this particular page is about. They're showing you, do you see how steep this line is right here? Well, that line that I circled has a slope of four. And that other line that's out here beside it that I just circled again has a slope of one half. Four is bigger than one half. They ask you to take the absolute value so you can compare them. You want to compare the positive versions of those numbers. So remember, the steeper the line, the bigger the slope is. I think in the earlier example, I said the steeper the slope, the bigger the rate of change. Well, you know what? Let's tie it together. A rate of change is nothing more than a slope. Slope means rate of change, and rate of change means slope. So I'm going to tie that together for you, and in, in hopefully in a nice, neat little bow. All right, let's look at this middle one here. 
you have a slope of negative 2. Do you see how it's a little bit steeper than this one? Okay? So compare their absolute values. 2 is bigger than 1. So the one that has a slope of negative 2 is going to be have a greater slope than the one with uh, a slope of negative 1. Okay? So look at the lines. Look and see what's steeper. Look and see what's steeper. This might be a little bit harder to tell because they're going in opposite directions. Um, but let's take a look. This looks pretty steep. Okay? So that's a negative 3. And this is not as steep. That's a 3 fourths right there. And you're going to compare their absolute values. And you know what? 3 is bigger than 3 fourths. So the line that has a slope of negative 3, its absolute value is bigger. So that means it's a steeper line. Okay? So hopefully I've tied that together for you and it makes perfect sense. Try uh, the last page in, yeah, try this page right here and do those on your own. See if you can calculate the slope or look at it and tell what the slope is and then correlate those on that last page. Tell me whether the slope is positive, negative, zero, or undefined. Great job, guys. Thank you for your focus.